Welcome back to the Reseller Journey Podcast. And today we have Brian Roning, a full-time reseller, giving us some insight on maybe if you're a part-time reseller or you're wanting to get going full-time, he's going to kind of explain his journey, explain how he was able to go to a full-time reselling um, and kind of just kind of share some tips in what helped him you know, achieve that and where he's headed towards the future. Brian, how you doing? I'm doing well, Bo. Thanks for having me on. I want to say before we get started, uh, you know, I found you out, I think at like 1.2K subscribers or something like that. And uh, I was telling Sean, uh, Taylor Exchange, I was like, dude, this guy's making good quality content. His business is doing well. It's like, dude, we got to get to know this guy. He's doing good things. I could tell, uh, yeah, that you just worked hard and we're doing good things and you're trying to get better. You're just one of those people. So, um, yeah, I was excited to, to get to know you. And um, yeah. Thanks, time. man. No, that's awesome. I do recall maybe you had left a comment early on, but I just try to be able to show as much as I can behind the business, being able like your channel's growing too, just to be able to like help those beginners out there. Because I knew when I first started, you know, there's so much information out there and it's really hard to figure out who to take seriously, you know? So I was like, well, I'm just going to show what I do every day behind the scenes, mm -hmm. how I ship the packages, what I look for products and also show some of the mistakes too, because there's great value on like what not to do because yeah, I wish I made more. <laughs> sorry. I mean, I wish I made more content like way back when, when I was making mm -hmm. more mistakes and wasn't doing yeah. well. And it's like, I almost didn't want to show it. And I also was just focused on the business, but yeah, it's, I, I wish I got more of that on camera, just going through the process. Yeah, because like if you don't learn from those mistakes and if you're not showing the mistakes, then other people may lead down that path that it, it can cripple your business. Like I can tell you from personal experience just within the last year, if I had kept buying bulk wholesale, bulk bales, having stuff shipped to me, my business would be in complete shambles right now. So I'm kind of in a whole renovation mode on what I'm doing with my eBay yeah. store and like if I didn't show that, then maybe other people could second, you know, question like, hey, maybe I should still bring in individual pieces of inventory rather than having bulk stuff sent. Um, yeah, I, I like watching balance, it. Right. I've like seen your journey, man. Yeah. yeah. That well, that's awesome. why it's the Reseller Journey podcast. So let's get oh, into your you journey. Um, like first, just right off the bat, like what is one thing like a new beginner reseller should focus on if they want to make that transition to going full time? Uh, oh, so not beginner, like just getting into it, but actually yeah. beginner full time. Yeah. Like wanting like maybe they're doing it already, but they're like, how can I make this a full time job or a business? Well, at that point, you should know what you're selling. You should know if you're an everything seller and you're just picking out like the highest, like highest price items I can find, whatever it is, doesn't matter what it is. And you're just searching for those items or are you like niching down and getting good at one thing? Like before I went full time, I already knew I was doing just clothes. Like I've been doing clothes for a while. That was my business model. I wasn't selling, I wasn't doing anything else. No shoes, no nothing. It was just clothes. And this was before, this was a long time ago. I'm, I'm like, kind of one of the OG clothing sellers, even though my business doesn't really show it because I don't have like a massive business. Like some of these guys after like one year, I'm like, dude, these guys are crazy. But um, like I was doing clothing before like Tech and Chris were even had their podcast. Mm -hmm. Like I like, and then when I heard them, like, because I got into clothing like months before they started their podcast. And then mm -hmm. when they started their podcast and Tech was talking about it, like, yeah, these are all the reasons why you should do clothes or, or at least like niche down. And I was like, dude, this is, He's just laying down all the thoughts I had already. And it just like clicked. I was like, I'm already doing these things. Like, like I literally just have a thousand pack of poly bags. I don't have to store boxes. And I did it. I had to do it, by the way. I was working out of a one bedroom or we were a two bedroom apartment, but one of the bedrooms was the business. So I had the clothing in there. I had the, you know, the photo station shipping, like the inventory, everything was in one room. And if you watch my first videos, like, dude, it's like, packed in there and it was awful i hated it. i hated working out of there and i almost i quit i almost quit so many times because i hated working out of that one room um but sorry i'm a little bit, you asked the question what what no, should they this do? Is i don't good. know um, yes <laughs> well i think a lot of people resonate with the one spare bedroom hey i sleep in this room too right there in the corner and i sleep by my inventory i take the photos there 
I mean, that's how it all starts, right? The big, the big things that do happen start small. And that's how I started too. It's like, Hey, I'm just using what I got. Um, so definitely what focusing on what you're already selling and then deep diving down that route, like just pick up more items, make sure you're, yeah, you, you're you not going to figure out how to grow until you at least have like your base level, like product. You have to have like a proven concept of what's yeah. selling for you. And then that's, then you can figure out, okay, I need to get more. How do I get them? All that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know how much you want to get into it, but like you need to have enough money saved. I mean, that's, an obvious thing like my wife and i had a lot of money saved before we quit and i also was a teacher when i quit so i got paychecks for a while you know so i didn't have to worry for a few months um and then after like three months then i had to worry but then i had a huge saving so i you know i had a lot of time to grow um which was good um yeah you need a lot of money saved i don't know when yeah. to get to like numbers because it like depends on your on your situation how much money you need my wife and i had have no debt cars paid off we were living in a two bedroom apartment with cockroaches. Like it was gross. Like we lived in a cheap place. We had no, like almost no expenses. I mean, mm -hmm. our cost of living was so cheap when I was building this business. Now, you know, I'm getting older. We, we, uh, we still are debt free and have our cars paid off. I just got a new car. We just paid for it in cash, but we have a mortgage now. Uh, my wife's pregnant. She's due in three weeks. We're having our wow. first kid. Nice. So, Congrats. Yeah. 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 So things are just different now. I got to, you know, I got to stay more consistent and, um, yeah, I keep getting off track, but no, that's fine. <laughs> um, the one thing you brought up is like, for me as a beginner and you hear it from other people, you know, they take a lot of their first sale or their first sales of the week and they just reinvest all those profits back into the business. And yeah, they're still paying for their, you know, expenses of their livelihood, you know, car payment and, and rent, but you're taking a certain percentage of what you're making net every month and then putting that back into the business. And now that amount is up to you, you know, however much you can live off of, but being able to take those extra profits and put it back into your business is actually what's going to grow your business long term. And you want to have that state of growth because everything around us is, you know, going higher in cost. Rent is going up, warehouse space is going up. And if you're not growing, you know, like USPS, their rates have gone up like every year for the last 10, 20 years. So you got to at least be putting money back in your business so you can absorb a lot of those increases. So, and one, yeah, no, one that's thing that great. me a lot is like, we have a home with a three car garage. So I have plenty of space where I never, like I'm never going out of the house. Like this business is meant to just be in my house. I'm not outgrowing the garage. So I have no overhead. And I think for a lot of people growing, that's very important. Like try to keep your overhead low if you can, if you have the space or whatever. Um, it's like, I would rather hire an employee and pay for the employee than like having to pay for space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. Don't don't uh, make those investments too early. Like, yeah. One thing I've always heard is like, if if you want to hire an employee, um, wait until you're shipping out so much product that it's taking you all day to to get your shipping done. Mm -hmm. Because if you hire someone to do photos or do sourcing or do the listings, and you're only shipping four items a day then it's like, it's going to be cutting into a lot of, you know, you'll be in the negative every month, you know, you so. should be efficient all day long. Yeah. Like that's why I have a hired employee because I'm still for a while there was like, I was sourcing, but I wasn't the more I sourced, the worse the sourcing route got. Cause I was going to further stores, like worse stores. And it was like, it got to a point where it was like, if I hire somebody, I'm not going to be efficient with my time that I buy back because I need to figure out like the new route or where to go. Um, and so now I'm getting to that point where, yeah, if I hire somebody, now I'm doing other things. I'm starting other businesses. So now I have stuff to work on. If I hire an employee, I buy that time back. I can make money. I know I can make money basically yeah. instead of like, oh, I don't know if I can make money if I hire an employee, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that principle applies in so many areas of business to be able to buy back your time, to be able to like build the machine, know how it works with the, the standard operating procedures, like, you know, this happens, you do this, you know, and then you're able to train up an employee to be able to go do other things that are more, maybe paying you a little bit more money. You know, it's, it's, hard, it's hard for to me. Do, dude. Uh, I haven't yeah. hired anybody yet, but like, it's hard for me to like give up something. I, it's like, once I do it once, I know it'll be easier for like the future, but I just haven't made that step yet. And I, mm -hmm. I know I need to, 
Mm-hmm. And because uh, it's going gonna, gonna to make my life so much easier to be able to other, build other businesses. But it's like, dude, it's like my baby. It's like, that. Yeah. It's like, and I know, yeah. dude, I've had terrible losses. So I know, like, I almost like empathize with them now, like, because it, it was their baby and they were hiring me, you know, it's like, now I just, I can't be on that. I can't act like that. I can't, uh, I gotta be, I gotta be able to trust people and, uh, mm-hmm. hand, yeah. hand it off to them. It's tough. But then once you do it, you know, you're able to focus your time on other things. Our time is the most valuable resource. Um, and it's like, if I'm spending time, you know, doing the listings and doing all this and I can hire that out, I'm going to look to do that. Even though I'm back to doing the listings, um, it just takes time training someone. So the reselling business in general has changed. You've been doing it for a long time. Like what do you see going on now currently in reselling? And is it getting a little bit more competitive versus when you first started? Absolutely. Um, and it, this is going to be, this is going to be like, uh, you know, like depending on your geographical location, like some places are just going to be worse than others. Like I know for me, like, I think the bigger cities are not being hit as hard, um, because there's just so much to go around. But if you live in like a medium sized town or a smaller sized town, it's going to be tough for you. It's getting tough for me. Um, and so that's why, like, I don't want for me personally, I just want to have like a small, like 60 K year around there, give or take 10 grand, uh, like net business, um, just to like pay my bills basically. And then start other businesses because I know at this point, if I need to scale, I need to go to the bigger city. And I think that's common for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people are doing this part-time and if you just have like a few stores in your town, the part-time people and the full-time people are all going to gobble up that stuff. And it's like, you know, you, you, I feel like a lot of people, you got to go to the bigger city. And I know, I know that that's what I have to do at this point if I want to scale. And I just, I don't want to do it personally. A lot of people do, they love this business and they want to grow it. I like it enough just to like make, you know, for it to pay my bills, but uh, I'm, I don't really want to like travel to the bigger city and do all that. So um, it's definitely getting harder. And the other thing is I thought it was just like, Oh, I can outwork the people in my town and pit and find this stuff. And although that is kind of true, like I can get to the racks before that I can source all day and I can grind and like beat out the competition in my town. Uh, there's a lot of people around the U S selling all this bread and butter items, you know, and that's raising how many are listed on eBay. And like all these bread and butter brands are now becoming like obsolete. Like you can't sell them anymore for profit. Trash it's like getting butter. really tough. Yeah. So you need to find those better items. And yeah. uh, that was something I, in the back of my mind, I kind of knew, but I didn't realize like how bad it was going to get. And it's not bad yet. Like it's still, but I, th- I do think it's going to get harder. And it's the, the future is going to be selling really high end items and you have to go to the bigger cities to find those so i think that's really what it's going to be um the days of just picking up bread and butter in like a small town is getting a lot harder i think yeah. i mean i live in a town of about ten thousand people and i go to the goodwill wow. just before church um and there's a line of like six yeah seven people and you're like huh you know that's interesting and they don't go to the clothes they go to like the shoes hard goods there's a couple other people that go to the women's clothes um and yeah like maybe a couple years ago there was no line there but now people are like oh you know i'm a stay-at-home mom i could do this part-time you know hit up the goodwills when they change the tags and see if i could find some stuff so yeah it's definitely you don't do women's clothes anymore um, no, that's, those are the racks that I hit the last now. So I'll do oh, okay. men's jeans, men's pants, men's button ups, polos, sweaters, jackets, blazers, and then I'll hit the women's mm. dude. Yeah, it's, I'm really trying to cut out women's. I want to be honest. It's crazy to me that people do just men's clothing and don't hit at women's clothing. It, it like boggles my mind. And here's why, like, so I don't go through the women's racks at all. I never do. Uh, but the majority of clothing is women's and basically my whole business model is like going to the new racks when they roll them out. And so most of it's women's clothing. So I'm going through all the women's clothing that's new, but I'm not going through the, all the racks cause it's gonna take forever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not an expert in it, but, mm-hmm. uh, like I basically learned how to sell women's clothing just through going through the new racks basically and just looking yeah. up everything. Um, uh, but yeah, most of the, most of the good stuff is coming off those new racks and it's women's stuff. So, yep. Yeah. I mean, I've already have the, 
since I have sold women's clothing, um, I'm not going to not do that. Since I'm listing mm-hmm. 20 items a day, maybe I don't find the best stuff in the men's section, so I'm going to hit the women's. It's just not something I'm going to first. Um, and starting to just niche down, like looking over my categories over the last two years, it's been men's jeans, men's pants, women's jeans, and women's pants. Mm, like over the year, over the, the best-selling categories in my store. So I just need to double down on that and continue to do that. It's a good category so, right now too. It's getting cheaper to ship them and whatnot. Yeah. And I'll include shorts and things like that, obviously to, you know, for seasonality, but yeah, the competition is rising even just three years ago, three and a half years ago when I first started, um, more people on YouTube talking about it. Um, but then again, too, there is an abundance of things out there. Like, it's crazy. We live in America. There's plenty of everything. It's just about who is going to put in the most work. Like, like you said, like, you know, what, what is a drive for you to that big city to get those extra items? Uh, like in terms of time. Yeah. How far is that? Uh, it's about an hour and 40 minutes to the first store. And then I would go further out of town. And so the drive back would be further than that. I don't know. Two two plus something hours. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I drive about an hour to Portland and then do like a little thrift route once a week, twice a week now. Um, and I think it's worth it, you know, because I am able to get cheaper stuff versus the local mm-hmm. Goodwills here. It's less items, more time. Like I'm walking out with 10 items after like an hour of looking at, through everything yeah. versus going to Portland and I'm coming out with a hundred items in an hour to two hours. Like yeah. that's how often they're restocking the racks. Like they are restocking because there's so many resellers taking stuff off the racks, you know? Yeah. So, um, it, it's interesting, you know, and I think that it is, if you're not have that edge of going a little bit further, it's just going to get a little bit harder for you being innovative on how you source, um yeah I, i'm in, i live in like a sort of medium i don't live in a big city but i don't live in a small town it's kind of medium so it's like for me it's like perfect just hitting that like 20 items a day going out finding the 20 items coming home listing them you know if i if i hire somebody to do the photography i could be done by one o'clock like i wake up ship list go out find the 20 items be back by one and work on other businesses and make my yeah. 60 grand a year to pay my bills and then focus on right. other things that's kind of where i'm at it's like i either do that or i go to the big city and ramp it up to you know, 200 items or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's like, uh, for me, just, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fine. Everyone has their own yeah. place they want to grow their business. I want to get in the chat. If you guys have questions, just drop them in the comments section. We will get to you. Good to see you, Josh. Hope you're doing well. Um, it says, good to see you back on here, Bo. Yes, I am back. Now that I'm able to buy back my time and have an employee making calls in the other business, um but good to see you josh c monkey says atlanta is crazy i see teams of sourcers that must work for sellers or or our wholesalers yeah 100 percent um resale brothers what's going on tony and christian you guys got to check out their channel they yeah, are I just crushing. saw their podcast with the uh, caleb and resale brothers that was a good one mm-hmm. i really i really enjoyed your, your last one that was some just like lots of good stuff in there guys yeah 100 percent. i mean we're we're all in a similar boat as far as getting these ideas and and what's working for people and what's not working for people. And it's up to us to apply, you know, the knowledge that we're, we're soaking in. Um, there's no like one right way to do something, you know, especially when it comes to clothing, it's like, you could just sell women's, you could just sell men's, you could sell shoes, whatever, just take like that information and apply it and try it and see if it works for you. But like they say, bread and butter brands seem to sell better in the men's category. So yeah, yeah. it's, Although it's the, crazy. The women's bread and butter does seem to be cheaper though. That's the only thing, but it is more saturated generally, but yeah. at least in my town, like the bread and butter in my town is generally like $5, but like uh, for men's and then the women's is like three or four. So I don't know, it kind of like evens out for me, but mm-hmm. yep. Uh, Josh says, I think we all need to find our unique thing that we bring to the table, brand that and market it. Yeah. Get on Amazon. Um, Caleb says two legends. What's going on, Caleb? Good to see you. Um, check out his channel too. Has some really good content. Um, good information. I, I mean, I watched a video he did about just 
checking the style code of each of your items to be able to look it up, to be able to plug in that keyword that can really help sell things faster. And before that really didn't apply to me like a year ago because I was picking up like a lot of trash that didn't, didn't even have a style code. So even if it did, no one was looking for it. Now that I'm like paying a little bit more for my items, I'm intrigued to look up that style code and go, wow, this is actually something someone wants. So I need to check what style it is so I can at least get that you know, person that's looking for that particular item. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a good hack right there. Uh, big Dre says so far resellers aren't really in my thrift stores. They are always at the Goodwills, which is great for me because I rarely source Goodwill. Yeah. I mean, you know, I only go to the Goodwill because it's on the way to the smaller thrift stores. Like there's one thrift store that's like a church thrift store, but it's across the street from a Goodwill and their prices are half the price of what Goodwill is. So it's rare my, that I make Goodwill my top priority. I have uh, in my town, like the Goodwills are OK, but there's always like one Goodwill that they're always trying to prop up. And I feel like they they do send stuff from the bigger city to that one store, like whatever one's failing. And it always rotates. So I always like try to find what it is. And then I kill it at the store for like four or five months until they rotate. And that's kind of. That's kind of yeah. what I do with Goodwills. Yeah. And we all know where the Goodwill retail racks go eventually. You know, they're all going to go to the bins. And I've always wondered, you know, I don't go to the bins often, but I do see like more and more items with the tags on them, like the, the Goodwill retail tag. Mm -hmm. It's because no one's in my area. Lucky brand jeans, $29, $25. <laughs> yeah, Levi, that's insane. $25. They're and $10. You just here. Wonder, I mean, a lot of the consumers aren't going to pay when they know they can get those new Levi's at Costco for twenty twenty five dollars. Yeah, dude, um, I used to sell Lucky Brand all the time. Now I never do. Ever since they put them in Costco. Yeah, yeah, and then that's the demise too of. And I, I knew it too. I saw them in Costco and they hadn't gone down yet, and I was like, ah, crap. Yeah, I was like, dude, two months from now it's gonna be done. <laughs> yep. Uh, Josh says the big YouTubers are focusing on their own brand and have moved away from the sourcing to resell model. Yeah. I mean, YouTube in general, just like the create content creation in the reselling niche, you see as they get bigger, you know, the focus has gone more towards like, you know, how can I brand myself versus, you know, showing the, the behind the scenes while there's value in everything. Um, you got to figure out like how much time are you spending and how much are you getting back on your investment? Um, Can I touch up on that? Like, I think brand is everything. So that's that's one reason I, I want to be respectful to people who like love reselling and they want to grow the reselling business. But for me, like I need to be growing a brand, whether that it, I mean, it might be YouTube. I haven't figured out how, how if I want to like really do this YouTube thing or not, but like, I think brand is everything. I think you should be snowballing. If you're in business, like, I think reselling is absolutely amazing. It got me out of my job to start thinking like an entrepreneur. And I'm like forever grateful for that. And like, I, I think it's an awesome way to transition to entrepreneurship and thinking like an entrepreneur. But I think brands, everything, whether it's, it doesn't have to be YouTube, but it could be anything. Um, even just like, I've been getting into more, I'm going to talk about this like later, but more like affiliate marketing and stuff. And, you know, growing channels based on affiliate marketing and then companies start hitting you up like, Oh, can you market my product? And it's like, you're, you're snowballing this thing where you're, yeah, you're building a brand and brand is something that you can take with you. It's like yours. No one else can take it from you. Whereas like reselling, you're kind of at the mercy of, you know, the thrifts and the eBay and all these different things. And it's like, it's not really, it's not going away. Reselling is never going away. You can always resell stuff. That's, that's the great part about it. But uh, it's, there's nothing about it. That's really like, yours i yeah. don't know it, it yeah it bothers me you know 100 and i guess this is where i went with my channel was like for me the brand like mission statement is basically just solving a problem for a lot of people out there that maybe don't want to work a nine to five they don't want to work for someone else but they want to work for themselves but how do they do that i think getting into reselling on ebay poshmark mercari whatever whatnot is a great way to take that step into entrepreneurship and be able to break away from being told what to do versus becoming your own boss while it sounds easier, it is not. You're going to work twice as hard, but the reward Absolutely. in it, the fulfillment is there. I'm able to now 
after this, I can go to my kid's soccer game. I can go to my daughter's gymnastics. You know, there's no like, Hey, you I need have to go to an appointment there's... for my pregnant wife. Yeah. Hey, there we go. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's great freedom in that. And I love that. Like that is why I got going when my family started growing here. I wanted to work from home. I value that very much. And Absolutely. the whole point of my channel, the brand, the solving the problem is helping people jump from a W2 to working for themselves. And you can do it on eBay. You can make a good income reselling clothing on eBay, you know? Um, yeah. And it's like, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. But that's where my kind of whole idea of YouTube in general is I want to help people solve that problem and help them go from, hey, I don't, you know, maybe I just want to do it part time too. And I want to help people do that as well. But you're right. Branding is all about solving problems. And what problem are you solving with your channel? That, that's how all that's the value you're bringing, you know, um, without being like salesy. So, um, but um, yeah, yeah, it's a great point because YouTube um, reselling niche in general has seen like an explosion. You see people that are, you know, 50, 80, 100,000 subscribers in over a year, you know, where they started talking about reselling and then maybe it's a little bit different now. Um. But yeah, that, that's a good point, Josh. Um, that is that, that got us going for a while. Um, Emily says, what category or specific item is most tempting to you at the thrift, but isn't quite worth the squeeze and why? Um, I'll let you, you can go ahead and answer this and I can follow up. Um, what category? Hmm. I don't know. I just sell clothes. <laughs> so um, I pretty much sell any any piece of clothing that I can find. So it, for me, it's just anything outside of clothes. I'm not I'm not listing. I'll sell anything in clothes at this point. Like I'll sell ski suits. I'll sell ties. I got into ties recently. I don't know. Any kind of like men's clothing. I don't know. Maybe like <laughs> this is kind of random, but sometimes I don't pick up stuff because I don't know what the color is. If it's oh, like me too. coral or something, and I yeah, don't, I'm, I'm like, dude, I don't even want to, I don't know I'm what color is. <laughs> I, I brought up it. all these tags that I thought were 50% off, and I, she's like, I'm like, these are white, right? And she's like, these are green. I'm like, oh my God, I had to put them all back. Because my greens and reds are uh, like, they're just, my color's all messed up. So, um, which yeah, I don't really have a good answer for that. Um, <laughs> uh, I pretty much just sell clothes that I don't sell. It's like very black and white. It's very rigid for me. So yeah. I don't know if you have a good, better answer for that. No, I mean, there's no like specific category, but I, ha I have been phasing out of women's clothing um, just because, you know, I'm not wanting to really, I just seem like my returns more on the women's side for doesn't fit um, men's clothing mm. a little bit you know, plain and not having to really go over all these styles and different types of, um, you know, sleeve types, blouses, you know, and it's just a little bit more easier since I'm doing the listings now and the photography, everything on my own. I would say like if I was to, you know, more tempting is shoes. But then again, it's like then I'm going to have to spend more time cleaning the shoes you know, is that really worth it? I think if I was to do shoes, it would just be retail and online arbitrage or yeah, I'm spending 20 to maybe make 20. Um, that's fine, but I don't have to clean them. So yeah, I, if I do shoes, it's like, it's gotta be a huge profit margin. And like, I'm selling as is, I'm not cleaning it. Like I'm just mm -hmm. saying, Hey, the shoes weren't cleaned. You can clean them if you want. And I'll just take the $10 off, you know, and, yeah. and just sell them. Yeah. I mean, I was, like ninth or 10th in line at a thrift on Wednesday. And I was thinking, Oh man, I'm, I got to get to the jeans. Cause you know, they're going to get there first and they all just went to the shoes. And I was like, Oh, that that's nice. Um, I was only, the only one in the jean section for, you know, 10, 20 minutes. I was able to go through those. Um, you know, just, I think shoes are just really attractive, you know, especially with all I the hype. Stuff. I think the competition's high for shoe sellers. It's mm -hmm. pretty crazy. Yeah. I see a lot of shoe sellers. And I just, I tried shoes. I just don't want to clean them. I, yeah, that's where I'm at. So, but yeah, great question. Uh, Caleb says trends change slower in men's, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, 100%. Women's brands die in a month where older brands 
in men's can at least hold a baseline cash value, safer investment. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you see it all the yeah. time. Um, women's clothing that might be a good brand from three years ago, like Madewell. Um, no one's buying that style anymore. But you may find it and get excited, and it's a women's cashmere pullover sweater, but it sells for fourteen dollars because that's no one wears that anymore. And you're like, well, well, yeah, Madewell tops never been like that great. They've always been more of a jeans. jeans Madewell brand. in general, I think, is over unless you're able to find flared baggy yeah, something super cut. Style. yeah yeah in a bigger size but yeah that is a great point caleb um josh says uh competition isn't only on the supply side but it's also on the demand side there is a market saturation yeah yeah i mean compared to 10 years ago it's way different um this is why you see the Goodwills in my area, at least, are just crazy on price. But, you know, they're not researching all the brands because you can find, a, you know, an old Navy top going for 10 bucks. And then you find something right next to it, like a cool pearl snap for seven. And it's like they just don't really recognize the brands as they come out. You know, they're just not really aware. But they really love Lucky Brand. I don't know what's going on with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that good so i i, I um, feel like i think like a lot of these employees I, I hate to say it, but it's like there's certain brands that are like slightly above like cole's brands and so mm -hmm. they just think like that's high tier stuff that's the most expensive mm -hmm. stuff like like this is the good this is the good quality brands you know like tommy bahama you know like this is insane this is way better than cole so we're gonna mark up the price but they don't know that there's like tiers above that like they don't know those brands sometimes. I don't know. That's my theory. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. Um so Caleb says my Goodwills took away half off color. Triple the amount is going to the bins now. Yeah. Um I know some people have a goodwill where it's like a dollar day, 75% off color tag day. And yeah, our yeah, goodwill yeah. only does the 50% off one color every Sunday they change. And you know, I, I just I'll hit three Goodwills that are all local in my area and I'm just finding less and less items. And I only really buy when it's on that discount tag because I'm not paying $15 for a pair of Levi's to sell for 20. So yeah, unless you could find some brands that they know that they're not like aware of that they're marking up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I hope that doesn't happen to me because I hate going to the bins, dude. I, yeah, I tried the bins. It. I've done it and it's just way more competitive even from a year ago. Yeah. So like I'll yeah. go on a Tuesday night and it's like, what the heck's going on? Just tons just, of people. Yeah. yeah. Like I watch videos of people at the bins in their town and like people are just casually like walking around, grabbing stuff. I'm going to do in my town. There's like a ring of people around the bin and then like a mm -hmm. second tier of people with their arms yep. reaching through. I'm like, I'm not doing this. I'm out. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, it's good as far as if you like to do that and you can find good stuff, but I'm yeah. just trying to get away from the stains, the flaws. Oh, I yeah. picked this brand up. Great. Oh, but I found a hole in the armpit. It's like, I, I don't want to be forced to list that now because there's like a conviction of like, well, I paid a dollar and it's here on my board. I might as well take a photo and get it listed. No, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm yeah. tired of doing that. Um, and if I miss stuff too, then I ship it out when someone buys it, then it's like get a defect. So um, on my account. So chemo says men's equals a handful of categories. Women's equals infinity categories. Yeah. It's crazy how much women clothing are, are out there and, and you can make a full-time living just studying it, all the styles and everything and do great. Um, Josh says, Brian, you are bang on correct with the branding. Yep. That's no, really good. Um, Kate says, great to catch up with you. Love your shows. Good to see you, Kate. Thank you. Uh, Resale Brothers says, Madewell jeans in men's are decent. Yeah, I, I'm liking that. Um, that's why I, I'm in, liking picking up more men's clothing. Uh, see I don't think I've says, ever seen a men's pair of Madewell jeans. I don't think I ever. have picked up any either. Um, Monday is 99 cent day for the last week and then 50% off color and Monday is the first day of the new 50% of color. Our closet, our closest bins are two hours away. Who? Yep. I used to make that drive. Um, big Dre says, I don't like eBay arbitrarily giving buyers the seller shipping discount. I use markdown sales coupons and dynamic promo promoted listings already. Yeah. eBay is always changing stuff. 
as they should, but I feel like we are the test subject. You know, like they'll change stuff and they're like, oh, sorry, your search is broken. Oh, you didn't make any sales. We'll fix it. We'll get to it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess that will go into like our next topic. Um, like just more on your backstory, because you said you've been doing it for a while. You just bought a home. That's awesome. But like you were a teacher before this. Like what did what did it take for you to go full time? Like. Was it saving money? Was it learning how to do it first? What was it, you think? Um, Because YouTube probably looked a lot different then, too. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, a lot of it was figuring it. This was before Chris and Tech. So this was before all the resellers were doing clothing, just clothing. So a lot of it was me figuring it out on my own. Oh, man. I don't know. I mean, it was rough when I when I went full time. So I went full time right when COVID. So I uh, um, told them that I was not coming back next year. Uh, they gave me my contract and, um, I told them I wasn't going to renew it the next year. And a week later, everyone got sent home for COVID. So I still had like months left where I was like still getting paid. And I was still, I still had to do like certain things, but for the most part, we were not going in and like teaching. We were, um, and I was a PE teacher. So like, it wasn't like I had like come up with plans or anything. It was like, Oh, I'm going to come up with this workout, do it at home. Like it was, it was really stupid, but, um, so I had to, I had to finish that out. So, but all the, all the stores closed down. So it's like I was full time, but I had nothing to do. Like I had clothes for like a month, maybe to list, but things were closed down for a while. And then even when things opened back up, like savers opened back up, but they, um, was like, I think the first one, but they would open it an hour early to seniors and which I think is like 55 for them, which if you're 55, you're still young. All right. (laughs) There's still full-time resellers at 55 going in there and cleaning everything out. So, um, so that was tough. It was tough for a while. Um, I was still, I had a lot of money saved. Um, I don't know, just to throw a number around. I want to say, I want to say we had like 35 grand saved or something at at that point. And, um, I think my store was at like seven K or something, uh, like in sales. So I probably wasn't making much, you know, probably making, maybe making 1800 bucks, but I was like, okay, I've got money I can scale. And, uh, you know, I had someone hit me up, uh, that recognized me from my channel, which by the way, has been another problem. People are starting to know, like go to the stores. Now my honey hole stores are starting to watch my videos. There's a couple people in town that are starting to hit a honey hole. Uh, stores, which is annoying, but uh, he was, he was talking about going full time and he showed me a store and I think he had like, I think he had like 2.7 K in sales. I was like, dude, I was like, keep your job for a while. <laughs> like you really got to grow this thing. You got to get into a routine. Like even like seven K where I was at, I, that was, I needed it to be bigger than that. Um, mm-hmm. when I went full time and, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I was like, dude, you're not even close. <laughs> like I kind of give him the rundown, but, um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Make sure you have money saved. Just understand it's going to be a lot harder than you think. And it's going to take, it might take you years. It took me years. Mm-hmm. Um, I, something I don't know, I've never really talked about. And I probably should make a video about it. I actually got a job for a bit. Uh, and I let my store tank. Like I wasn't shipping out orders. Uh, I um, I wasn't, you know, like dealing with returns. Like I let my complete my store just completely like tank. Um, I got a lucrative opportunity that, to make a lot of money and um, I took the job and it ended up not working out, uh, which I don't know how much you want to get into it. Um, kind of a long story, but basically I was going to like build companies for this, uh, for someone I knew. And um, so basically like I had to go be a manager first to learn and then I was going to build companies, but I didn't get along basically with the uh, per a part owner of the company. And so she was kind of crazy to be honest. Um, and he knew that. Um, so he, after it didn't work out, he was like, okay, like the only reason why I went to that specific location is because it was five minutes down the road. Um, so after it ended up not working out there, he was like, I like what you're doing, but like, yeah, I kind of figured that was going to happen. Let's get you to another location. So they were going to move me out to California and I just didn't want to do it. My wife and I were thinking about having kids and both of our parents live here and we just didn't want to move away from family. And so that, yeah, that didn't work out. And, um, I went back to my store that was completely tanked, getting no sales. And mm-hmm. dude, I 
yeah, started drinking and it was, it was depressing, man. I was like, man, I had this lucrative opportunity going to a like dead store. Like, what am I doing? So I kind of like re went into full time, mm -hmm. um, out of necess uh, necessity the second time. So that was like pretty depressing for me. And, um, finally, finally really getting back at it, built up my store, you know, I got up to like, you know, 15 K months. It kind of crashed again when I moved into the home, moving the business and we bought a new home. So I had to like do a ton of stuff for the new home. I mean, paint, seal the grout, do the backyard myself. Like people are coming in and out to fix things. It was a lot. So my store kind of like crashed again. And now I'm kind of like building it back up to where it was. Um, and now we're having a kid, so I got to stay consistent, but, um, yeah, I kind of went on a tangent, but just kind of wanted to tell my story because I feel like it's, it hasn't been all like sunshine and, and roses, you know, it's been a lot of, um, a lot of stuff going on and, uh, finally feel like I'm feeling good about it, especially honest. And I want to tell everybody, like one of the things that made me feel good about reselling is this idea of just having it pay my bills and then building other businesses. And I feel like a lot of people, it's like they're either struggling and they quit or they have these like massive businesses, you know, doing hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And it's like, that's, that's not my story. That's not what I want to do. Um, yeah, I just want to, like, I can go out. I think anybody can go out, find their 20 items a day or whatever your profit is. Like I would say anywhere from like 15 to 25 items a day. I think anybody can do that. Come home, list it and have it pay your bills. And then from there you can decide like, do I want to really grow this thing or like build wealth in other ways or, or whatever. But, um, mm -hmm. keep your expenses low. People got to realize I was living in a small apartment that, you know, that had cockroaches and we wanted to get out. We, we did not like living there, but we did it to save money and mm -hmm. to build the business. And we had no debt. We didn't buy fancy cars. I drove my 2002 Camry to, we just bought a, a new car two months ago, uh, another Toyota, um, nothing crazy, nothing fancy. I used 2015, you know, uh, Toyota, Toyota, Toyota RAV4. Yeah. Um, and oh, nice. I drove that thing to, to 290,000 miles. Like I drove it into the ground. So we had no two paid off cars, no debt. Our, our expenses were almost nothing. And we had, yeah, two job. We were both working full time, no kids, no debt, no nothing. So if you, ha you know, have these nice cars and debt and all these like overhead and you're thinking you want to go full time, you're going to have to have, like I, like I said, I think I had 30 something thousand dollars saved. You might need more than that. You might need 50, 60. I don't know. Like, and then you just got to hit the ground running and mm -hmm. um, I don't know, bit of a tangent there, but just kind of want to tell a story and kind of what it's been like for me. I feel like for a lot of people, it was like, yeah, the first year. And now I'm like doing $270,000 a year. I'm like, okay, well, that's, that wasn't my story, you know? Um, yeah. I got a job and yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy. No, it's, um, there's a couple, you know, I was the same way. I had money saved up when I first started reselling, you know, we had a good chunk of money to be able to go, okay, this is the opportunity. Do I go get a job and continue to put savings away? Or do we start this business and go all in? And we did. And we just took every bit of profit and put it back into the business. Like we paid our rent, we paid the expenses, but we were the same. Like our cars were paid off. Like we had one cell phone. Um, like we were very minimum. We didn't even buy like new clothes or anything. Like we were just like, on my clothes. <laughs> <shirts. laughs> I, yeah. So like we were so minimum and especially with having four kids, um, like if we were to spend money, we're going to put it into, you know, our kids, we're going to go you know, to the zoo. We're going to have a fun birthday parties and, but like experience, but yeah, as far as like keeping up with the Joneses with like, Hey, I need this new car. I need this new fancy phone to take photos with i need this new camera um like we were so minimum and that is so important when you're starting a business there's that season of sacrifice like you're gonna have to maybe live in that one bedroom apartment with cockroaches for a while but just know that when you have a plan that hey this is just for a season the next season could be unfolding if I just stay disciplined in this season now, because people are so quick to be like, yeah, I'm going to go all in and do this. And then they find out at the end of the year, I did 200,000 in sales, but I spent 199,000. And you're like, was this even worth it? So you want to be able to at least put some money aside, um, whether you want to start a new business or invest in real estate, whatever. Um, that's important because you don't want to be working for nothing. Um, even though that feels like the rat race to, in today's society, um, um, especially, you know, nowadays with inflation, but 
Now, that's good to kind of hear your story. It does bring a good value to a lot of people that are in that situation. Like you may need to go back and get a job, drive Uber, you know, um, whatever to keep it going. Um, don't like there's a sense of pride that people have, like once they start doing their own thing with their own business that I'll never work for someone again. But you may have to go through a season. You get of, the right offer, man. The, isn't it, that too. Yeah, like if it's worth yeah. it. I'm not talking about like going back to Taco Bell, but I'm yeah, talking like yeah. if something comes across your plate where it's like, hey, they're going to pay you good money. You have to consider like, what is this going to do for me three to five years down the road? Um, yeah, something you touched up on was, um, yeah, knowing how much you've spent and stuff. And that's definitely like having your books in order. It, like if you don't have your books in order before you go full time, that's a problem. Like it's definitely something you need. You need to have figure out like taxes, books, you don't want to be dealing with that stuff while you're trying to figure out how to scale. You want to be focused on the business, um, like how to actually grow. You don't want to be figuring out, yeah, how you're, how much money you're spending and all that. You got to have that down. Um, so you need to have like a business plan. Like you'll deviate from that plan tons of times, but you need at least like a base level plan and your books in order and money saved. Like those, those three, absolutely. Um, you, you have to have, and I wouldn't even think about full time until you, you have those down a, a schedule too. It's like, what are you, when you first apply for a job, what's the first thing you get is a schedule. So if you don't have a schedule of like your hours planned out Monday through Friday or whatever that looks like, that's a big problem because as a reseller, yeah. we, we are doing so many things right from bookkeeping to shipping to sourcing. You got to schedule in these times mm -hmm. because then you need something to hold yourself accountable. You can't just Google make Excel, a plug it in accidentally now, you know, um, even though it's coming easier, it's just having a schedule is going to hold you accountable. So like going into schedules, what does yours look like? Are you putting in 12 hour days? Are you working every day? Um, kind of what does the workflow look like in the day to day for you? I've been, yeah, I've been slowing down on a eBay because I have been working on other things. Um, and I've just been pretty consistent now and I've learned how to like, I've kind of been changing out my routes, which have kind of been allowing me to pick up better and items and more items like per hour or whatever. So, um, you know, I want to say I work 40 hours on the business, but I don't even know if I do. It might be a little under that because now I'm focusing on other things. I'm doing the Amazon influencer stuff. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing like TikTok affiliate stuff, um, more YouTube. So I'm kind of slowing down. I really want to get an employee so I can buy back that time for photography. So right now, um, you know, I pretty much work till let's say from eight or nine, I usually leave my house around 8.30 to go sourcing and I'm done with eBay by like three and then I just start working on Amazon and other stuff. Um, and then on the weekends, just kind of finishing whatever I don't finish, getting my listings up if I, if I missed or whatever. But my plan when I get an employee, uh, my hopes is I wake up, I get my shipping and listing done before I go out before 8.30 and then I go out, find the 20 items, come home and be done by... Uh, be done by one o'clock and then just focus on other businesses. That's kind of my, where I'm headed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, same thing for me is like, I was in that transition six months ago, you know, going through, Hey, you know, we got revealed. My wife's had a neck problems for like 15 years from a whiplash injury from a car accident. And we just got the diagnosis six months ago, which is great. Praise God, yeah. because we've been unknown for 14, 13 years. Um, but hey, that those procedures aren't covered by insurance. And we're like, hey, reselling's great, but we're going to probably need to start another business to be able to really pour into this. And, um, and things change, you know, so um, starting other businesses, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and everyone's different. Some people want to go all in with eBay. Some people want to do eBay and then transition to something else. Um, and that's kind of where, where we're at right now. Like eBay is the main thing, but I'm also doing something on the side that's going to eventually pay off bigger three, five, 10 years down the road yeah. where we can start acquiring some real estate as well. Um, but yeah, everyone's different. And that's the cool thing about being an entrepreneur. You don't need to just stick with one thing like Amazon. Yeah. You know, that's a great, more passive income right there. So yeah, it's like I can make one video for Amazon and it might make me over the course of the next three, four years. It might make me hundreds of dollars for mm -hmm. 15 minutes of my time. Whereas mm -hmm. 15 minutes of my time on eBay might make me, you know, 40 yeah. bucks or something. Yeah, yeah. But 
you know, I need to make that money now. So I have to do eBay. It's still my main thing. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is definitely better for my time. It's just, I'm not going to see the money for a while. So I need to pay my mm -hmm. bills now. So it's like a mixture of like betting on the future and also like, I need money now. So it's yeah. <laughs> kind of finding that. Balance. Well, I mean, businesses are easier to start now, um, especially if you're just a solopreneur, but things still take a year. I mean, for my eBay business, it took me a year to really see, you know, it cover all of our expenses, you know, the rent, the electric bill, food. It took a year of yeah. thinking, hey, this is going to work. It's growing. But um, it just takes a lot of time. Same thing with Amazon, TikTok, whatever you're trying to do. Um, so what do you think makes like a successful reselling business? Like, what would you see? Like you said, you're at a certain point where, hey, this is this X amount of money coming in is successful. Um, what do you see that in like your eyes as far as like a successful reselling business on eBay or whatever? Hmm. I think like you should be making a lot of the most amount of money you can per hour. So I think like speed is everything, not just an eBay business, but I think entrepreneurship in general, like speed, if there's one thing you should focus on. It's speed. And I don't mean like physically moving fast. I mean like getting yeah. as efficient as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And that goes for any business. Um, so if you're, and you can feel it, the more you do it, it just takes reps to like understand where you're taking too much time. But like, it took me a while to realize I was just sourcing super slow. Like I was spending too much time looking at like random stuff, you know, just like thrifting for myself. Like, Oh, this, my furniture might be good or whatever. And it's like, no, I'm here to like work. Like I have to be like super efficient and like be done by the end of the day and be able to pay my bills. Like I can't be like looking at this, you know, bookshelf that I want to buy or whatever. Like I can't mm -hmm. be doing that. So, um, right. yeah, I think just like, obviously success is, you know, arbitrary or whatever, or it, or it depends mm -hmm. on the person. But, yeah. uh, I think just like some, I know, I know a lot of people, especially like part-time like, Oh yeah, I can kind of just like work on this nonchalantly. If you go full-time, you can't just like mm -hmm. not think about speed. You, you yeah. have to be efficient in every process. Um, that is like the, I think the number one thing in any business is just efficiency mm -hmm. and getting better, mm -hmm. quicker, faster. And if you can't, do it yourself. You need to hire somebody. That's where, that's what we talked earlier. Like your entire day needs to be efficient and then you can hire somebody. Mm -hmm. You can hire it out. But until you personally are efficient from the time you start work to the time you're like done to spend time with your family or do whatever you want to do. Um, if you're not efficient, you need to work on yourself first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. H holding yourself accountable in this business. Like you said, going to the thrift store for work rather than pleasure and, Oh, I can find this bowling ball or whatever. This would look cool in the yard. Um, like there's other people in there that have the mindset of work and they just got to those area jeans before you did because you were looking at some mugs, you know, or something, you know, it's, it's sure. different, but having the mindset of eight to five, I have someone expecting me to do the work, you know, for me, it's my family. Like if I don't do the work today, I'm letting down my family, you know, how's food getting put on the table? I can't just go out and, you know, I do have fun, but I also work hard too and efficient. Um, so it, it is a huge thing that a lot of people deal with because W a W two job is, is more like comfortable because you're told what to do as an entrepreneur, it's hard to figure out what to do in the steps on how to do it. You know, everyone lives in different areas. Not everyone's going to the same thrift. So figuring out where am I even going to source items? So you got to actually sit down, look up some Google maps and look at some of the reviews, look at how you can draw a route out. Um, you know, how are you going to ship your items? You know, how are you going to store your items? When are you going to take the photos? You know, all this needs to be planned out because if it's not, it's going to be harder to scale into a full-time income. Um, and all this takes time too. Like you can't just expect to know it when you first get started. Like I started in bins. So this guy's nice. trying to interrupt. Sean's calling, get him on, get him on the horn. Um, um something yeah. you mentioned there is, you know, having fun or whatever. And I, I want you to kind of touch up on this because I only have fun at the thrift up until a certain point. And that's why I don't want to scale this business is because all the stuff that I can hire out is like photography. You know, you could do listing, you could do uh, shipping, you could hire out everything. 
only thing you, it's like, in my opinion, really hard to hire out is the sourcing because it's the yeah. thing that takes the most knowledge. Um, you know, there's no degree. You can't just like, if you own, you know, a pharmaceutical business or whatever, you can like hire a doctor or whatever pharmacist or whatever it is. Like they have degrees. You just like plug and play those people, but there's not like the amount of knowledge you need for reselling is a lot and there's no school for it. So it's like, you, you can't really hire that stuff out. And I haven't found a way to do it efficiently. I know like tech and people did it back in the day, but, but that, that's because there was so much money flowing around and reselling at that time that it was easy to do that. But now we're, it's not the same thing as it was before. And I know you kind of went that route where you were um, getting your items sent to you. And that just, to me, sounds really difficult. Um, so I don't know if you want to touch up on that, but I, I you probably already did in your channel, but I just, uh, I don't know. It just seems really difficult for me. I don't know you if you have any thoughts about that. Um, if you can fig think of any way to make it ha happen, or is it just you think it's tough? Or um, I mean, it can work, but you're gonna have a lot of stuff you're gonna probably throw out. Like as far as getting stuff sent to you, um, it's really tough because you can give someone a brand list, you can give someone to source for you. Um, I know Marcus has tried this a couple times, uh, Dixon's Pickens, um, you know, having people source for them and then they find out how much you're making and they're like, well, I'm just going to do this myself. <laughs> and then you're like, well, okay. Um, so like there's a fine line, you can do it, but I think you also have to do the individual items as well. Because if you're just relying on people to source for you, they may send you that brand, but it might have a hole and a stain in it. And just might not be the quality you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So um, I know sourcing is the hardest part to outsource. You know, the person has yeah. to have the years of knowledge like you do. Oh, to pick up a, you know, um, a certain, uh, you know, Travis Matthew, but only pick it up if it has a certain pattern and a certain size because the sell-through rate is a 2XL and those sell for, you know, X amount of dollars. You know, all these little things are hard to tell to a person, like especially if they're not in yeah. it you know, for the long run, they're like, they're just going to pick up the brand and you're like, great. You bought a foot joy, small polo blue with a stain. They're like, I got you the brand, you know? So that's how it was for me with wholesale. I was like, I got the brand, but it was terrible size. It had yeah. a defect. That sounds like, right. Well, thanks, <laughs> but I'm not going to do this anymore. And I did it and in my store crashed you know i got up to almost eleven thousand items i'm now down to about 9500 because i just keep deleting all the stuff that i should have never put in yeah so um i know there is a way to do it but i think um there's a fine line and, and not a, a lot of us are on the level of like tech and sports where you know he was listing 250 items a day where where that had to happen you know people bringing him stuff because could you imagine doing that by yourself yeah <laughs> he'd probably no be way. dead um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think that does have a place, but I've really enjoyed picking up individual items. Um, if I were to outsource stuff, it'd be like the photos, the listings, then I could source more. How many and items do you do with now? Oh, uh, one forty. Okay. Yeah. So I do, I do 20 a day too, but I take Sunday off. So I, um, I don't want to be like thinking about eBay on Monday. I still, or on Sunday, I still, mm -hmm. um, I still will work a little bit, but I, you know, it's like family day, church day. I kind of just yep. chill, but, um, there's value yeah, in a day of rest, time. right? Sorry. A day of rest. Gotta yeah. have a day of rest. Um, yeah. for me anyways, it's something to look forward to. I try not to even work on Saturday either, unless it's like yard sales or like something fun to do with the family. But yeah, I want to talk a little bit about that because, uh, I'm, I'm starting to realize how good they can be. And I think I need to do them. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing is going to just like community sales. So I don't mm -hmm. go to individual garage sales, but if there's like a nice neighborhood that has a community sale, it's like a no brainer to hit it up for me. It's like, I can go, I can hit up. I basically just drive around and look for clothes. It's just like yeah. big racks of clothes. And I go pick up a bunch. It's super cheap. I can find better items for cheaper. Mm -hmm. It's basically better than thrift stores, um, but they're all right next to each other. Um, so like stuff like that, or like church rummage sales or school rummage sales have been really good for me. Um, mm -hmm. that's been really like boosting, um, on my store recently. Yeah, it, it's fun to do because the, the potential to come across something that's really valuable in the clothing, you know, where Goodwill might price it up is higher. Right. Yeah. So for me where I live, it's harder to do cause there's just smaller population, but, um, I like the thrill of the hunt. You know, I think a lot of people get into this because it's, it's fun. Like you don't know what you're going to find, especially if you're an everything seller. It's like, you could find something that can sell for a thousand bucks and you buy it for a dollar. You know, that's, that's exciting. It makes great content. 
Um, and don't ever lose the edge of having fun. Like businesses are a grind, but you also got to have fun. Um, you That's where I found myself not wanting to grow because I was just after around that 120, 140 or 440 uh, item mark, I was just not having fun sourcing. And I was thinking about how to scale and I was like, well, if I hire everything out, I'm just going to be sourcing more. I'm like, yeah. I'm sourcing the amount that I want. So I'm going to I'm going to pivot and just have it pay my bills and, and do other things. That's yeah. And once I realized that it, oh, it was like this burden lift off and I was like, oh, yeah. I can just resell like the amount that I want and then make money in other ways like that's beautiful like i just felt yeah. so much better yeah see when i was having items shipped to me or picking up bulk and driving back i was not having to source as much as i am now so i'm able to list more but it also wasn't as fun now that i'm listing a lot less it's much more fun and it reminds yeah. me why i even got into this in the first place um pensacola to, sorry oh oh no go ahead i was gonna say you turned me on to, i actually tried i didn't like it so i didn't go back to it but i actually made a be after watching your videos, I made a Facebook account and did Facebook ads. And mm -hmm. uh, after about a week, um, went to someone's house and got this big deal. It was, I didn't like it though. Um, yeah. It was tough because uh, the person was really like attached to their clothes and didn't really want to sell them, but they like, mm -hmm. they were in a position where they had to. And I just didn't like being in that position. And I was like, nope, going back to thrifts. And, I mean, I, yeah. made, I made money on it. It was fine. But like, I just, I was like, I don't yeah. know if this is for me. You know? Yeah, you're talking about the Facebook ad posting in buy yeah. and sell groups. It works, but then you get the people that are like, oh, I paid $100 for that Patagonia jacket. I'll sell it to you for 95 And you're like, yeah. but it's just going to go to Goodwill anyways, right? And they're like, well, yeah. <laughs> you know, <and> you're, <laughs> like, well, you're just going to give it away. So, yeah, you, you come across that a lot more often than, than not. I just picked up a... a couple weeks ago and the lady's like, there's five pairs of Madewell jeans in there. I want like 30 bucks each. And I was like, I'll give you a dollar. I'm like, these things have stains and holes and half of them I'll probably end up throwing out. And she's just like, okay. And I'm like, you're just going to give them away anyways. So you might as well take some money rather than nothing. Yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. It works, like, I don't want to sell for that. Even though they know they're going to give yeah. it away for free. Like, and now I just pick up stuff that's on the brand list. Uh, 10 <coughs> pieces minimum. Otherwise, I don't pick up because most of the time people are going to put in trash in there. And it's like, yeah, I have three brands on your brain list, but 90 clothing items are time and true. So, yeah. or whatever. Uh, Karen Scott. Um, <laughs> Pensacola <laughs> Flipper says, I have arrived. So now we can begin. Good to see you. Jason Finley asks, Do you miss PE? No, not at all. Okay. I'm so I'm never looking back. I'm I'm a very introverted person. I don't like being around a bunch of people and kids and stuff. Um, I you know it, there are there were aspects of it that I liked. Um, I mean I, I liked obviously you 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 bond with the kids and you meet their families and it's you know there's a lot of good things about it. But man, it was like just the equipment flying around everywhere and you know I had class sizes of like mid thirties. Like I'd have a class size of like 37 kids. Like it was wild, man. And just so much stimulus and kids getting in fights and this and that. And it was just like a lot of like stimuli. And I'm a very like calm person. I don't, I'm very introverted. It just, it's not the environment for me. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a lot of fun, but it's, it, it's not like my temperament. It doesn't work for me. So I'm, I'm glad I got out. On to new things. Uh, Big Dre says, I opted out, but I wouldn't be surprised if buyers start asking for shipping discounts. Yeah, he's talking about the cold calculated shipping is actually calculated shipping now. Um, that's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. I wonder how it's going to be for clothing. Um, I already offer somewhat cheaper shipping now. Um, we'll see. But for you know everything hard goods sellers, that might be different. Uh, Miss Lachey, good to see you. Um, they go, she goes, yeah, <laughs> 55 is the new 35, except your body doesn't know it. Yes. <laughs> um, Showtime says, when do you know to go from seven to 10 items listing a day, especially when sales fluctuate and can be from seven to 12 a day? A two. Uh, slow days may, maybe five. I mean, I would suggest just selling at least half of what you're listing a day before you even look at what you're going to do, because you're going to have to figure you're going to source that many more items too. you know, like, can you afford to source an extra five items a day? 
Is that in your budget? Always being aware of what you're spending every week and set a weekly budget and make sure you don't exceed that. Like, you know, if you're making a thousand net a week, don't be spending 900, you know, um, make sure that you set a limit of like, Hey, not until I start making 1500 a week is when I can increase my weekly budget. So those two factors I would say are the most important, like make sure you're getting more money in your bank account coming in every week before you even think about listing more. Cause then you're just going to be eating into your net profit. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, it's all, uh, kind of like you said, it's all what you can afford. I think that's the main thing. Um, if you can afford it, do I mean, scale as quickly as you can go up as much as you can, if you can afford it. Um, yeah. If you have yeah. money and savings too, like put money into yeah. your, make sure you're buying good stuff. And that was one thing like going full time, you know, uh, I never had to like closely like watch my books or watch how much money I spend, which was nice. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I, I kind of knew like, Oh, I was scared to pay like, you know, $15 for items. Whereas now I don't care at all. So like I was like a, aware of like making sure my cost of goods are low, but I never like closely was like watching it. Um, yeah. So that's it. it and that, was, that just comes with not having a, a lot of expenses and having enough money saved. So I was very fortunate that I never had to like really stress about the exact numbers and spend time worrying about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Getting your numbers in order, though, like whether you're tracking it on a pen and paper, at least knowing what you're spending, you'd be surprised how many people at the end of the month are like, I've been doing this. And you're like, well, how much, you know, what are your margins? And they're like, what's that? And then, Oh, that's scary. <laughs> um, so C Monkey says, yes, community or church sales. Those are the best sales for the cheapest, right? They're most rummage sales around me are like a dollar an item for clothing. So that's like rummage not... sale. I got a pair of, um, oh, my mind's blanking because I'm on camera. Uh, <laughs> uh, true religion jeans for like a dollar. I was like, dude, this is, this would be $30 of the thrift. Like, this is great. Mm hmm. 50. Yeah. Um, Miss yeah, Lachey yeah. says, in essence, when you buy from someone over and over again, you're teaching them to source for you. There is a learning curve, but even they know what you will buy at least on the bread and butter level. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Eventually they will know what you buy. Yeah. Um, you can do it for sure. hundred percent. You can train it. You can train out all of these processes. It's just, what do you want to buy back your time in first? Like resell brothers, uh, mentioned like a good idea for clothing. Like, Hey, have like a relative or someone that you know, where you can come back from your sourcing trip, drop off all your clothing. You set up a photo station in their basement or extra bedroom and then just pay them per piece to take photos on their own time. They can work from home. I thought that was a really good idea because getting someone out here where I live, like I don't have neighbors, like who am I going to find to come out here to take photos? So maybe outsourcing stuff like that it doesn't take me long to take photos though. So, um, got to think in for their education. If you're buying from someone over and over again, you're, you're paying for their mistakes over time and you're, you're really betting on that person, which is doable, but it's, I don't know. You're, you're entrusting a lot. Um, in them. Six by six. asks a really good question. Sell through rate store or a brand list volume store. What is the most money efficient? As I grow, I'm, I'm really focusing on sell through rate and just moving items. I mean, I don't want a big store. I don't, I just want to get, I was moving. That, mm -hmm. That's really like key for me right now. Yep. So I'd say sell through rate. Yeah. Same here, you know, sell through rate just in general, um, you know, having a big store of a hundred thousand items, but things take five years to sell. That is a business model and that's great. But I think a lot of people are attracted to spending five today and within a month I get 20. And doing that faster and faster and faster is going to end up making you more money than spending five today making 20, but it took five years to do that. You know, um, it's, but it's different for everyone. And now I'm switching to just sell through rate model, at least 50% sell through rate, um, or more to pick up and put into my store. Like I'll still pick up jackets and sweaters this time of year, but, um, it's been much more rewarding. You get that money back faster to go out, buy more, better items um, versus a volume store. It's like I have stuff that I'm deleting out of my store in 
over two years old. And it's like, I should have never bought that even though I have the space. Um, Caleb says 47 people in here with only 11 likes. Let's hit that like button. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. You know, I'm here to just bring as much value as possible. Share Brian's story. Um, you know, times are changing. And I think if we don't change with the times or initiate the change in our businesses, we're going to be stuck, you know, with having to go apply for a part time job. So always looking to change things up, you know, with cross listing or whatever to try out to be able to raise that bottom, you know, line as far as how much you're making, you're going to have to do it nowadays. You know, the set it and forget it is long gone, um, especially on eBay. Um, sea monkey says Pendleton jacket last Saturday, three bucks. Awesome. Yeah, that's a beauty. That's nice. Um, where'd you find that? I don't remember, dude. I got out so long ago and I just haven't listed it yet. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'm sure I got it at, at like a salvation army. I think, mm -hmm. um, uh, big Dre says this month, Mercari sales beat eBay sales. I might be benefiting from Mercari's new fee structure. Yeah. Are you, are you on Mercari or I'm, I think I have two things listed. Uh, uh, I'm not on any other platform right now. Okay. I'm, dude, I'm trying to make this business as simple as possible. I used to not do, like when I first started, I used to not do, um, like, uh, allow offers. And when I, and I was always like, hmm, I wonder if people do that. And I found out Kaylee Eileen doesn't do offers. And I was like, mm -hmm. dude, if I start building these other businesses, businesses and making more money, I'm like, I might go back to that just so I don't have to accept offers all day and not worry about it. Dude, that yeah. seems like a dream to me. Like, yeah. Oh dude, accepting offers all day. Cause dude, I'm always checking my phone, accepting offers. Like if I, if that just mental thing of like, Oh, I don't have to check this thing now. Like, Oh, Either that would be it or so not. much easier. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of my plan. I was like, once I found that, I was like, dude, and thank you, Ky Kaylee. I mean, if you ever, whatever, see this, um, yeah, that, that no, is she, awesome. Um, I, I may go back to that at some point. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And if you're picking up really good stuff, like I would say putting best offers on things that aren't that desirable, but if you're putting in really good stuff and you know what that sells for, why are you putting best offer on there? They could buy it or not, you know, um, especially if it's really good stuff, which she picks I, up. Yeah. And I lower the price of my items each month. So if, if I accidentally price it too high, it'll eventually hit the price range that it needs to be at. So hundred percent, I don't even really need offers. Everyone loves getting that 50% off offer when it's even a good item too. And you're like, ah, should I take it? Sales are slow today. Um, but yeah, there's beautiful ways to build this business. And it's good to learn from other people that are doing it on a high level like she is. Um, yeah, Kaylee Elaine is amazing. She has the formula and she has help too. So um, being able to have helpers in that business. Oh, thanks, is Regina. Nice. I haven't talked to you in a while. What's up? Been a Regina while. says hello. Another OG. Nice. Good to see you. Um, so how can people get a hold of you? I did link your channel down below if people want to check out your content. Um, but maybe if people have questions, what's the best way to reach out to you? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm just Brian running across just my name across the board. Uh Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Any last yeah. words for people that are trying to make the jump to full time, maybe leave them with one principle or piece of advice that they should focus on. You know, a bunch of advice that I got was to not do it. Mm. And that, uh, that made me really angry and I did it anyway. So if you don't have that same feeling, if, if it is so hard, man. So if, if, you don't get that same feeling of like, nah, screw it. I'm going to do it anyway. If you're not getting that feeling, you're like, oh, maybe not. Don't do it. It's so hard. Honestly, do it part time, make some extra money, build some wealth, be able to, you know, be more comfortable doing it part time. That is awesome. Unless you have that like burning desire of people telling you no, and you're like, screw it. I'm doing it. If you don't have that, don't. That's my advice, honestly. Yeah. I think as a whole, population humans in general just don't like being told what to do and when you say don't do it they oftentimes do the thing that you're telling them not to do you know like kids you're like hey don't touch that stove it's hot and they gotta touch it they gotta touch it because you told them not to and they gotta see for themselves but yeah you're right like you know if, if people are giving you flack about hey what are you doing you know you at least gotta try it try it and you could always change 
But if you're on the fence about trying to go full time, or maybe you're not even a reseller and you're just wanting to get into it, try it. The best part about reselling is the low cost barrier to entry. This isn't an Amazon business. Yeah. You're not having to spend 50 grand in inventory. You can literally take a dollar today and turn it into a hundred within a week. Like Target Finder says, Brioni shirt paid five bucks and made and sold it for a hundred bucks in one week. It's a business that, education. Yeah. yeah. So that's the cool part. And if you guys have questions or comments after the live, just comment down below. I'm here to help you guys. Um, and hope you all have a blessed weekend. Thank you, Brian, for coming on and your time. Thanks so much for having me on, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. And we'll have to have you on in a couple months. See how you're doing. Yeah, appreciate sure. you guys. We'll see you on Monday. Take care.